We want to continue our conversations about Job now, and we're going to talk about the theology of the participants. And we will start with Job himself. Job is wanting to insist that he has done what is right, that he is not evil. The friends insist kind of on the philosophy that comes from the book of Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, uh, based on a national scale, uh, if Israel obeys, they will prosper. If Israel does not obey, then they will receive curses. If one applies that on the national scale, I think that has some value. But as soon as you start to play, as soon as you start to do that on the on a local personal scale, then you end up into all kinds of difficulties. But Job's three friends were operating on that reward model, and that was their picture of God: that God will reward you if you're good. God will not reward you. He will. If you if you're being having difficult times, then that's clear that you've not done what is right. So that's basically the three friends have a theology of straight reward scheme. The one other character, and I don't know that I can really characterize Elihu. He's the young man that comes in from three dialogues and separates the the divine monologue. Um, he has some traces of that. But most scholars who think about the book think that uh, Elihu is just placed there as kind of a literary device to soften um, things up a bit before Yahweh comes up and uh, really levels Job with his zero out of 84 quiz. Now, what is Job's theology in all of this story? Well, Job doesn't really understand what's happening. In fact, his book his part in the book is to simply say, I have not done evil like you've accused me. Uh, if God would only come out um, from behind the bushes and talk with me, then everything would be fine. And there's an interesting passage that um, it, it's one which is often misunderstood. But in Job 19.25, it says that I know that my Redeemer liveth. And it's often taken by Christians as a, a resurrection passage. But what that passage really means, if you take a look at it in Job's setting, is that the Redeemer is his Goel. He is the near kinsman who comes to rescue the family name, honor, and property. So uh, Job is actually saying, if God would only come and, and talk to me, then everything would be fine. And he is my Goel the one who would actually uh, put things right. Now, it is sometimes troubling for Christians to think of that the resurrection, that this is not a resurrection passage. In a secondary sense, it certainly applies to the resurrection, but there is no real evidence in the book of Job that Job believed in a resurrection. Now, one of the interesting clues is that if you go to the Greek translation uh, and look at the book of Job, there's an interesting addition at the end of the book. In the Hebrew book, the book simply ends and says, and Job died, an old man, full of days, period. That's where it ends. But the Greek translation adds a phrase, and Job will live again with those whom the Lord raises up. So that's a, a classic illustration of how readers are inclined to go back and read their theology into the earlier one. But Job's focus, his theology was based on his understanding that God, would um, would reward him not so much for what he's done, but he certainly would not condemn him for evil, for deeds which he is certainly unaware of. Now, there's one other person that we might want to mention here as having a theology, and that's Job's wife. She comes in just briefly. Um, when Job says, the Lord is given, the Lord is taken away, his wife says, why don't you just curse God and die? Now, I'm going to suggest something here, which I think is probably not the intention of the author. But in Hebrew, the word curse and bless is uh, its the same word. So the, you could interpret conceivably Job's wife as saying, why don't you just bless God and die? You've lived a full life. It's successful to us. Why don't you just bless God and die? Now, I suggest that is a possibility. Um, 
although I've not really convinced myself that that's really that she is really one of the good girls, but uh, that certainly is a possibility. As the text reads, she also is simply operating on a reward scheme. So it is only Job all the way through who has the conception here of a God who does not simply operate on a reward scheme, that there is something more mysterious. And with that mystery, we have to simply leave the theology alone.